The Pequot people were burned alive in the middle of their sleep at night in 1637. Mass Bay Colony, Plymouth Colony, Providence Plantation, Mystic Seaport, all English colonies banded together to burn women and children while they slept in a village at night. They barricaded the exit. They did not allow anyone to leave. They wanted them to burn. They were proud that they burned. This country was proud to write. We could smell their burning, rotting flesh for over a mile away. It's written, folks. Please read it on your own. I am not making this up. Stephen King can't make this up. He was so proud, the town of Norwich, Connecticut, had a, a statue honoring this man up until roughly a decade ago. John Mason, the man who murdered over 700 people. When anyone, the few people who were able to survive that Holocaust, they were rounded up. They were sold as slaves. Before they were sold, they were marched all the way from Connecticut to Mass Bay Colony, present-day Boston. They were placed on trial. They were declared to be sold as slaves. But before they sent them on that slave ship, they had to humiliate them some more. And they read a declaration that those people shall not ever, once again, even utter the word Pequot. They will no longer be able to call themselves a Pequot. I am proud to say I'm a Mashtuck Pequot. This is the history, folks. Because that particular day, that particular incident, is when this country declared its second religious day of Thanksgiving. This is what we're celebrating, folks. And for all of you who took pictures of me with my nice little pilgrim head buddy here, I hope you get the story that goes with it. Because anyone who sees this, I'm sure, thinks I'm a sick, twisted individual. This is a reminder. This is what Hallmark greeting cards and Charlie Brown cartoons should be showing when we celebrate this holiday every year, when we celebrate Columbus Day every year, because this is what it represented. I'm going to shut my mouth so we can get on way with this march through town, because we need all of you who are here to get this story out to the people. I can only visit so many schools in this time that I am here on this earth. And I can only visit those who are welcome to hearing the truth and invite me to do so. I encourage all of you to do the same. I look out and I see in this crowd, I see some people that have been at their schools and they are here now standing in solidarity. I really appreciate this. It means they're listening. Somebody's listening and they don't appreciate what's going on. This symbol right here, we're going to march all the way around and we're going to make one stop at the church where King Philip's head sat on a pole until it rotted for over 20 some odd years. For those of you who do not know who King Philip was, he was the man who started the most patriotic uprising this country will ever see when its native people stood against these forces and this manner of warfare during King Philip's war when King Philip abducted Mary Rawlinson she reported in her own writings she was treated with far greater respect by this savage than she was by her own people. Our women were topless. There was no rape. We did not need abortions. The word matumwasas is what we call our women. It does not mean woman. It means she who makes all decisions. We had a high respect for our women. That was something pilgrims never understood and still does not translate into America today. <laughs> square buildings. Square buildings that cost us so much to heat to build, to cool, because we're sheltering ourselves from what's going on in the natural world. I've never seen a bird build a square bird's nest. That is the most absurd thing, and Americans still repeat this European nonsense. When are we going to come up and show the rest of the world what should have always been there when we first tried to get our teachings across in the 1600s? Listen to us. We're not saying we're better. We're just saying this works in nature.